Many people think that 3D printing layer lines are ugly. I disagree. So in this video, I'm trying to print the thickest layer lines possible. Because what if they're not a flaw? What if they're like wood grain? They're a signature and not a mistake. So let's find out how big we can make those layer lines. First, let's print something with standard layer lines. I think a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and just standard settings are the right thing for this. For consistency, I'm going to be printing all of this in see-through PTG and vase mode. So let's get printing. So this is the first version and as expected the layer lines are really thin, which normally of course is something that you want, but today that's not good enough and we need bigger layer lines. Quick intermission, this video is sponsored by Hodo Snap Blocks. And I love Hodo as a company and already have tons of their tools and the Snap Blocks are just really cool. They have three different things, which is a screwdriver, a rotary tool and kind of a drill. And all of these, I think, are really good and really essential for people as makers. And I love the format that they have here. You know, it's really well designed. These click together really easily, so you can just take them apart and back. And also, all of these just go together really easily, which means sorting and organization is super easy. All in all, I've been loving these and I'll be using them in this project. So if you want to check them out, click the link in the description down below and use the code ARNA10 to get 10% off. I think the next logical step is getting one of these 0.8 millimeter nozzles. With this and the biggest settings, we should already have a big difference in layer height, jumping from 0.2 millimeters to 0.56 millimeters. One cool thing that I can definitely recommend if you have an A1 or an A1 mini is printing this magnetic front cover that allows you just to take it off and just to put it back on. This makes changing nozzles so much easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and print the second version. This is the 0.8 millimeter version and the layer lines are already a lot thicker but still not thick enough. The problem is that here we've reached the limit for layer height for this printer for a bamboo slicer. So from here on out things are gonna be a lot more experimental. The good thing is I think there's a way to print thicker layer lines without doing anything to the printer itself and just doing some tricks and software. My new plan is to grab Worker Slicer, which has a lot less guardrails. They'll just add the printer profile and say it has a one millimeter nozzle, because if you want to print a really thick line, for example, I'm trying to make one millimeter, you have to have a nozzle that's just as big. For some reason, that's a slicer thing that you have to set. But if you do those things, you can set your layer height a lot bigger than standard Bamboo Studio would ever allow you to do. So I'm still using my 0.8 millimeter nozzle, but in Orca Slicer, I said it's a one millimeter nozzle, so I can now in Orca Slicer print one millimeter layer height. So let's give this a try. So I think it's pretty obvious that something is very wrong with this print and I'm gonna have to figure out what. You can see that the first layers actually went down pretty well, but after that you just have these tons of beads just kind of going down. Not gonna lie, I think this looks pretty cool. It's just very much not what I wanted. I just checked the video of the print and you can see that in the end, the print head is way above where it should actually be printing. So that's how the filament kind of curls up because there's too much distance. And I think that means that the printer is too fast and you know, it can't keep up with those really thick, really high layer lines and I just need to slow it down. I also thought that maybe my filament absorbed too much water. So I just put it in here for like whatever, 12 hours, but still that didn't change anything. And that's looking like another fail. From my research, and that's basically just one Reddit post I could kind of find on the topic, I really have to slow the printer down as I said before, and you do that by limiting the max volumetric flow in the filament settings. And it was supposed to be 17, which was the normal setting, and I already put that down to 11, and I thought that was pretty slow, but that's still not working. So I'm just gonna go really slow and put that to maybe like three and see what happens. Finally, the sprint worked and those are some thick layer lines. The trick probably really was just slowing it down, but I'm not really sure what actually did it in the end. So I hope I can reproduce that for the next try because I wanna go even thicker. Now I think this is the part of the video where the more you fuck around, the more you find out. Because I have a kind of stupid idea in it. I think I'm at a point where to get bigger layer lines, I need a bigger nozzle. The problem is there aren't really any bigger nozzles or they're super hard to get. 
So I just have to make my own by just drilling out a normal nose. So to drill this out, I grabbed this Hodor Precision Drill, which is really nice because if you're doing any precise drilling, this has all the kind of drills. Also, I ended up going with a 0.4 millimeter normal nozzle because this isn't hardened steel. I think drilling through the hardened steel nozzle like a 0.6 or a 0.8 millimeter would be way harder. So we'll just go about this and see if we can actually drill this out easily. So now I'm already at a 1.1 millimeter nozzle, which is pretty big, but I want to go to a 1.5 millimeter. Since the filament is 1.75, I think 1.5 is like the biggest. I should really drill it out so the filament still gets like squished into the nozzle. And then we'll see if I can ever get this thing to print anything. Look at the difference. This is 1.5 millimeters compared to a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. The difference is just insane. Well, 0.6 millimeter and 1.5 millimeter doesn't sound that much more in terms of the nozzle diameter. In terms of the area of the nozzle where you're pushing a filament, it's six times bigger. So we gotta push out six times more filament, which that gets interesting in terms of what can the extruder actually do. So with the non hardened steel nozzle and this drill, so I could just like slightly drill it ever wider, this whole thing went super smoothly and I'm really happy about this thing. Also, I could see that the front of my new nozzle is just like really messed up. So I actually have another tool right here from Hodo as well, which is kind of the sanding or rotary toolkit. And I'm just gonna use that to sand off the tip and give that a little nice round edge. So that's perfect and there's no, yeah, no weirdness, no sharp edges on the front. And after that, I think we'll just test it out. The filament was like bubbling up. I think it's getting too hot. So either it's not pushing through fast enough. I'm just really not sure what's happening here. As a solution, I'm trying a max flow rate test on this printer right now. And by that, I can hopefully see what the flow rate is, where this filament still comes out really nicely and prints well. And then once I have that figured out, I can just print with that. So I think the test was a success. You can definitely see from the bottom that it's still bubbly, whereas at the top it gets clear and here it's around like 25 to 30 cubic millimeters per second in terms of flow. So I'm just gonna set this and start a new print and hopefully that's gonna come out way better. Sadly, things are not as easy as I thought. While, you know, this looked pretty good and worked really well when using the same kind of max flow rate on the thing I actually want to print, then this comes out. And as you can see, it's not looking good. And again, it's that the extruder head is over the actual print and but just lowering the flow rate doesn't really work because then the filament gets too hot and bubbles up. So I'm just trying to dial in the right settings. Hell yes, we finally have a version that works. This is 1.5 millimeter. It didn't bubble. It's pretty see-through. I'm so happy with this. This is finally done. I think it looks really, really good. And it's it's been a journey to make all of this happen. And when I say it's been a journey, I want you to know it's not like these couple ones here. It's all of these two. With my print profile, I think I was on the V26 just for the 1.5 millimeter version. So it's been a ride. All in all, I really like the result and hopefully I've kind of figured it out now, but yeah, it's not a very trivial everyday task. You know, there's reasons we don't usually print with something like this, but if you wanna go through the motions, I'll be happy to share my print settings down below. So you have a starting point but depending on the filament, you'll have to adjust stuff and you will have to adjust a lot. 
All that being said, it's been a fun ride and I really like the look of these. Also, do check out Hodo in the description down below. I generally love what they do. I even made a Gridfinity holder for all three of these snap locks and I'll link that in the description down below. They have their own Maker World profile where they make their own mods and I really like that in a company. So yeah, do check them out. Other than that, I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye.